Alright, hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today is going to be part 2 of my 2021 basic scripting tutorial. Last time we went over the basics of Roblox Studio. I know that video was a while ago, so if you forget or you haven't seen that video before, I highly recommend going back and watching that. I will leave the link to part 1 in the description of this video. I will also have it pop up in the cards right now, so it should be somewhere on your screen or in the description. So if you haven't seen that, like I said, I highly suggest going to watch it. But today's video is going to be focused on properties, what properties are, and how we can change properties through scripts. Properties are one of the most important things in programming, they're at the core of everything. So today's video is going to be very important, so make sure you stick around to the end. Before we get into the video, I just wanted to show you all the FungoDev server. If you're interested in being a member of this community, make sure to join this Discord server. The link will be in the description below. This is a place where you can chat with me, get announcements whenever I post videos or whenever I'm streaming different games. As you can see here, I stream games that aren't Roblox. I do development streams. You can get notifications when I post. There's questions of the day, help channels if you need help with your development. I personally help people in here sometimes. And it's just a great place, a community of developers. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure to join. The link to that will be in the description below. So to start off, I'm going to try and explain what a property is and what has properties and where you can find them. So for starters, I'm going to close these just in case anyone doesn't have those two windows open. First and foremost, whenever you're developing, you're going to want to have your Explorer tab to view all your assets and your properties window to view all the properties of a specific instance or asset open at all times. So to open these, you're going to want to click your View tab at the top, click Properties and Explorer, and these will open those two to the right hand side. You can drag them around and move them wherever you want them to be. Uh, you can resize them once you're somewhere by clicking and dragging, or maybe not while it's at the top, but at the sides you can. I prefer to keep mine on the right side with the properties a lot bigger than the Explorer, but you can set those up however you want. Just make sure you have them open because they'll be needed for what we're doing here. So, as you can see right now, there's nothing in the properties window. But that's because I have nothing selected. Every single instance in Roblox Studio will have some kind of properties, even if it's something as simple as the sound surface. You can see there's ambient reverb, distance factor, Doppler scale, the name, the parent. These are all properties of an object. You think of properties as like a piece of info to help describe that object. For example, if I go to this part, you can see it contains a property called brick color, which is the color of the part. It contains a property called cast shadow, which controls whether or not the part casts a shadow. There are all different things describing the part. Some of them are physical, like the appearance, and some of them control physics. If you go to behavior, for example, can collide will control whether or not other objects can collide with it. Anchored will control whether or not it falls through the sky. So if you see if I put it in the sky, and I turn anchored off, and then I run it. You'll be able to see that part fall. Gravity is affecting it. However, say I went back and anchored the part. I think I can do that while I'm playing. It'll stay in place. If I unanchor it again, it'll fall. So that's just a very basic, brief description of what properties are. They're different parts of an instance, some sort of asset that describes that asset and how it functions, how it appears. All sorts of things about it. So these are really important in scripting because pretty much everything is controlled through a property. Say you have the player's health, that is a health property of a humanoid object. Um, player's walk speed is a property of the humanoid object. Say you had a player's money, that would most of the time you would have some sort of money object and then the, you would change the value of that. The value of that would be another property that you change through a property changer. Um, pretty much everything that you would need to do, not everything, but a lot of things you need to do will be done through properties. So they're really important to know, and they're not that hard to figure out the basics of. Like in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to change some of the basic properties of this part, for example. So the first thing you don't want to do when you are changing properties is you need a script to do so. So your script can be in multiple places. Um, for this example, I'm just going to put it inside of the part. So here we have a script. If it didn't open when you insert a script, you just double click it. Uh, the insert a script, I didn't explain that. Click the little plus icon next to a part or a service, and then it'll bring up 
a list of objects you can find script or you can just search for it up here by typing in script make sure you do not add a local script right now because that is something completely different we will learn about those in a future video but for now we're just working with a script so as you can see here the basic script is print hello world which if we were to go ahead and run this right now you would see in the output it would print hello world if you don't have the output open you can click your view tab and click output to open it i always have it open when i'm scripting because that's where any prints errors or warnings will show up prints are good when you're trying to check for what's breaking your code or solve something in your code that's good for debugging first thing we're going to do in this script is i'm going to show you how to access different properties so first you need to access the instance that you want to get the properties of so in this example i want to get the properties of this part so there are two ways i could go about this first way is by typing game this will access your game so now if you do dot you can access the children of the game which a list will show up here or anything of these services are all children of game so I want to get to this part. So we see that part is inside a workspace. So I'll want to say game dot workspace dot and then whatever the name of my part is or what I'm trying to access part. Now this little line of code right here gives us access to this part. But this will error if we do it right now because there's nothing happening and it's not complete. So say we want to access this part's transparency. I could say game dot workspace dot part dot transparency as you can see if i put a dot a list of properties will come up roblox is really good with their auto completion and helping you figure stuff out so this gives you all sort of properties um and the children too as you can see since script is underneath part it'll pop up a dot in scripting is used to access any instances children or properties or events i believe some events so i'm going to type transparency because i wanted to change the transparency right now so now this will give us access to that specific part's transparency. The other way we could do this is whenever you're in a script, if you just type script, it's like typing game, except it goes off of the script. So the, pa the part's relationship to this script is its parent. So if I do script.parent, it goes up one. Whenever you're doing dots, if you don't understand parent and child, um, if you want to go up one, you would just type dot parent. So if I did script.parent, that would go to part. If I did .parent again, it would be the workspace. Or you can do the name to get children. So say I added another local script inside of this script. If I did script, but in here I did script.local script, that would give me access to this local script. We're not going to use that though. So preferably, for what we're doing right here, I would use this. However, this is completely fine to use too. There are different situations where you should use different ones. There's no really set answer about which one to use. It's just how you should get something depends on what you're doing and how the script works and how you program the rest of the script. But for right now, I'm just going to do script up there. Now I want to get that part to transparency, so I'm going to say dot transparency. Now what we need to do is change the value of this property. I believe every property has a value, which can be changed, um, changed, viewed and used to compare and if statements which we're going to learn about in a different video but for now we just want to change the value so if you do space or not even space i just you want to do a space for your formatting a single equal sign that'll change the value that is used to set the value of a property so if i do script up parent dot transparency equals 0 0.5 what this script is saying is get the script that we're currently in get its parent which is the part get that part's transparency property set the value to 0 0.5 the after the equal sign is whatever your value is there are four or five different types of values in roblox lua i believe there is your boolean value which is a true or false value that is boolean there is well, i'm gonna just comment these out so the bool values which is True or false statements, so it's either true or false, nothing else. You have your integer values, which are any whole number. So one is an integer value, two, three, four, five, and so on. 
you have your number values, which are any number at all, including decimals. So like 1.256.5.6, um, 5124.234. Those are all number values. Um, you also have, should be, I think, a couple more. These are like your basic programming values. There are other types in Roblox Studio. You have color values, material values. Um, these are the basic ones we're going to be working with. I know I'm forgetting one right now, but... Is it? I can't remember it for some reason, so... Oh, string. Oh my gosh. String values, which are your text values. So a string is any line of text. So say you wanted to type, hello, that is a string value. And if you put a string value in your code, it needs to be either between double quotations or single quotations. It has to be written one of those two ways. So say I wanted to change the name of the part, I could do script.parent dot name is equal to, say I wanted to change the name to my part. If I just did that, that would error because it's not a string value, it's trying to access something called my part, like when we wrote script or when we wrote dot parent. What you need to do is put that in quotation marks. Now it sees the quotation marks and it's like, oh, okay, anything in between these quotation marks is a string value. So right now, if I run this code, it will make this part semi-transparent and change the name to my part. I meant to run it, not test it, but it, it'll have the same effect. As you can see, our part is half transparent. If we open the workspace, it is named my part. So if you were following along, you did that, you just wrote your first mini script. Now I'm going to show you something slightly cooler we can do with this using a, something called a weight. So say you wanted to make a disco floor, for example. You would need a way to change the colors and add some sort of delay between the color change, because if the color is changing every 0.2 milliseconds, it's not you're just going to kill everyone that tries to use the disco floor, especially if they have epilepsy, and you don't want to do that. You need to add your weights in there. So what I'm going to do is say script.parent.color is equal to um, brick color dot, and then this will bring up a list of brick colors. So if you want to change a color of a part, you do this. Then say, if you want to ever make anything weight in code, in Roblox, you just type wait, two brackets, and then in the brackets you put how long you want it to wait. So say I copy that little bit, and I add it three more times, I could say make it dark, we'll say I make it red, blue, green, and what other colors are there? Uh, why is yellow not, you know, what, brick color dot, Okay, whatever, I, <laughs> we will just do black. There's also different ways to access brick color. I can't go over all of them in this video. If you just search up Roblox Wiki, Roblox Dev Wiki, or Roblox, how to access brick colors, how to change color, you'll get given a list of different ways to do it. The Dev Wiki documentation is always helpful when you don't know what you're doing. You want to make sure you're reading that first and foremost whenever you need help with anything. So now if I run this, I'm going to change these weights to 3 seconds. It'll change colors 4 times with 3 weights in between. However, this won't be infinite like a disco floor, because we would need a loop for that. This code reads top to bottom, but once it reaches the bottom, it will stop. And we got an error. What did, what did I do wrong? Oh, my bad. You need to type dot brick color. If you're changing the brick color, you need to do dot brick color. If you're uh, how do I show this? Okay, if you go over to your part and properties, as you can see, brick color and color are two different values. Brick color is all of these. Color is like your generic RGB values. So you need to make sure if you're setting a brick color, you're changing the brick color property. If you're setting an RGB color or X or whatever any of the other color values are, you're using the color property. Now if I run this, it'll work fine. But like I was saying, this won't be infinite because code reads top to bottom. As you can see, this is working here, but it's going to stop once it reaches the last color. If you wanted it to be infinite, you would have to use a loop. However, I'm not going to be showing that in this video because, once again, I want to save that for a future video. 
This is just a look at properties and how to change them. You can change anything with properties once again. Um, this is just a quick recap. Anything can be changed through properties. You have to get the part that you want to change the properties of. However, you're going to do that. Dot, get the name of your property. You can do material, reflectance, transparency. You can change the size, position, rotation, anchored, can collisions, any of that. So you type the name, say I wanted to do can collide, and then you set the new value. Say I wanted to make it so it's not collidable so players can walk through it, I would set that to false. Go. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I'm going to try and give people challenges to do using what we learned in every video. So for today's challenge, what is something that we can do just using properties? Try and make it so. Try and get a part and change as many properties as you can of it. Try and get have a basic gray part and make it so when you click play, it'll change its shape, its size. Can you change shape? Um, yeah, change its shape, its size, its position, its color, and its transparency. All on play. Try and do all of that to one part to make it look like a completely different part. The other challenges will be more exciting, but there's not a whole lot you can do with just properties without using something like touched events or some sort of events, which I'm going to go over in the next video. So try and do that. Let me know in the comments below whether you were able to do it or not. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next part.